Alright guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce, getting ready for our final discussion for the day here. And we now want to talk about managing diabetes through diet. Now the cost of medical care here in Kenya seems to be rising while the quality is impoverishing. And you know, that's leaving a lot of patients quite concerned about what's going on, what sort of options they have as far as treatment is concerned. And um, we just want to look at the options because diabetes is an issue that affects so many in our country today. And we also want to learn about the different types. What are some of the preventative measures that we can take but also if you're someone already struggling with diabetes, what are some of the things that you can do? Joining me to discuss this is Hannah Wanjiru, who's a clinical nutritionist. Kaya Busana to the show. Thank you. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Now, diabetes, how many types are we talking about? So there are two types of diabetes. There's um, diabetes type one, which for the longest time has been known as juvenile diabetes. Juvenile. Juvenile, because you're born with it. Oh, okay. And then there's type two, which um, occurs over time, okay. especially uh, based on the type of diet and the lifestyle generally. Right. So type one diabetes is whereby the immune system attacks the cells that produce a hormone called insulin. Okay. So they mistakenly attack the cells because they are seeing them as foreign. Mm. So that's the type 1 diabetes and it happens from, it can happen from birth, it can happen from childhood. Okay. And then there's type 2 diabetes which uh, happens later on in life, especially from the age of 45 but now it's even happening at younger ages and that's dependent on lifestyle mostly. Right. So that happens when um, one, your cells resist um, the hormone insulin because um, insulin is usually produced typically when we eat food. Um, what happens is that carbohydrates are broken down into glucose. So typically your body ought to reduce the glucose in your bloodstream by releasing the hormone insulin. Mm -hmm. So what happens in type 2 diabetes is either one, your cells are not responding to the insulin that is being produced by um, your what we call the pancreas, mm -hmm. or um, it's not producing enough insulin to lower your blood sugar. That's why when we're testing for diabetes, we actually look at the level of sugar in blood. Mm. Yeah. Okay, mm. so with the one that you're saying is juvenile diabetes, mm -hmm. it, is it something that is discovered also at birth? Because I always imagine that when we see diabetes in children, or okay, at least nowadays, it seems like it's this type 2 diabetes, mm -hmm. which is very much related to lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing kids eating a lot of sugary drinks, sugary foods, mm -hmm. uh, highly processed uh, meals as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with the type 1 diabetes, is there a certain age at which it manifests? So usually it's the symptoms that lead to the discovery of any type of disease. So mm -hmm. when the sugar is high in your blood, there are particular symptoms that doctors will notice for them now to start doing their investigations and find that there is an auto, because it's an, for some, it's probably mostly referred to as an autoimmune kind of disease because your, your immunity is thinking that the pancreas and the cells, uh, they're called beta cells that produce the insulin are foreign. Okay. So they're attacking them. So if they're attacked, then you can't produce, the child can't produce enough insulin to lower the blood sugars. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, so speaking then of diet, it, mm -hmm. it has a major role to play, doesn't it? In it both does. the prevention and, and the, the management. Yes, for sure. Talk us through that. So um, in, time, in terms of management, um, diet plays a huge role because as we say, as we even define diabetes, it's a it's a disorder that results in the, the sugars accumulating in your bloodstream. Mm. So sugars are actually in food. Carbohydrates, um, generally you can find carbohydrates in milk. It's called lactose. You can find carbohydrates um, in fruits. It's called fructose. You can find carbohydrates in the typical foods that we expect, the rice, the ugali, the chapati, of which it should be there because the sole source of energy for our bodies is carbohydrates. carbohydrates. So now the problem comes in when our bodies are unable to now reduce that glucose in our bloodstream. Mm. So now the diet comes in in terms of um, it is sugar. So the sugar is coming from diet. So there's no way you can manage diabetes without looking at the actual food that the person is consuming. Okay. So we look at uh, the timing of the meals, the types of carbohydrates you're oh, having. The timing. the timing of meals is very important with diabetics because it has to be concurrent with the medications that they're uh, they are taking. Okay. So it's, uh, it's holistic in okay. terms of the medication, if it's physical activities, and then nutrition comes in. And nutrition is in terms of the sugar, because sugar is in food. 
So right. it's not avoiding carbohydrates because you find uh, diabetics being very afraid of carbohydrates. Oh, you can ascari, siwezikule, you know. It's just knowing the types of carbohydrates that are good for them, the ones that they need to avoid, the timing of the carbohydrates, and the amounts that they can have if it's uh, for breakfast, mid-morning for a snack, because their sugars also need to remain stable mm. within their bodies for them to have sustained energy levels. Uh, at lunchtime, there's a particular amount uh, mid-afternoon, in the evening, and some will even have a snack before going to bed. Wow. Yeah. So uh, it's quite tough then. I mean, it, um, it <laughs> managing, it's a lot of work, let me say. Initially? It is, and that's why um, support becomes very, very, very essential. Like, there needs to be a whole lot of support. And one of the misconceptions that we actually try and um, talk people through is that there is no such thing as a diabetes diet because it is a healthy diet for everyone. Mm. In fact, everyone should adapt that kind of diet because the reason as to why people are ending up with obesity and the diabetes is because their diet is lacking in one way or, the, or another or they are overeating a particular kind of food. Yeah. Um, there is no balance in their diet, there is no variety in their diet, so that's what's ac actually um, sorry, leading to the diabetes right, in the first right. place. Yeah. And you're going to talk us through what that diet should look like. Mm -hmm. But just before we do that, I mean, even in speaking about the types of carbohydrates, the mm -hmm. types of, I guess, sugars we're inputting into our bodies, mm -hmm. the other big thing is how those carbohydrates are made. I mean, we're well not made, but cooked, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the biggest things which you hear with diabetics is, is, oh, now, you know, they have to eat everything boiled yeah. because even the process of cooking some food can alter, I guess, yeah. the, in, so I don't know how to explain, but yeah. like the intensity, if I could the, say, of the rate those carbs, which, the, yeah, sh the, the, the sugar, mm. yeah. So uh, there's something called glycemic index. So the, one of the most interesting things is that diabetics are usually told um, not to eat uh, potatoes because they, uh, they have what we call a high glycemic index. But the interesting thing is that when you um, deep fry them, absolutely you do not want to have fried potatoes because uh, potatoes by themselves uh, release sugar quite fast. Mm -hmm. Glycemic index is basically the rate at which sugar is released into the bloodstream. So for a diabetic, we want the sugar to be released slowly and gradually. For so everyone you want in that general, glycemic index to be low? To be low. So there are foods which have a high glycemic index, so the rate at which the sugar is released into the blood is quite fast. And we do not want that because immediately the sugar is released into the blood, the body is trying to release insulin equally as fast, and that's when the demand becomes too much and too high. Okay. So we will recommend things like whole grains for them. We will recommend, um, now the whole grains will be like brown bread, or actually, let me correct that, whole grain bread. Yeah, I was going to ask becomes, you about yeah. that. There's, there's people also playing games on the market. There are. You know, <laughs> we're looking at you. But uh, there's a difference between brown bread mm -hmm and whole, whole grain, grain bread yeah. and that's where so many of us get confused and lost when you're in that aisle because all of these things are labeled healthy and mm. natural mm. and organic mm. and yet not really <laughs> those are what we call marketing gimmicks yeah we we'll even have things written diabetic friendly no sugar but diabetes is not not just about the sugar that's added right. in food it's the carbohydrate that's eventually converted into, into sugar. sugar yeah Okay, so whole grains. Whole grains. Mm -hmm. um, we, want, we have something called resistant starches. So things like legumes, uh, we'll have the beans, all sorts of beans. You know, black beans, red beans, kidney so beans, to see lentils. To, to see I don't know. Jahe. Yeah, you know, for the <laughs> longest time. You know, chakulaya maskini, that is yeah. so, such a mis myth and a misconception. Yeah, a the yeah they are. are very healthy and they have, they have proteins, they have starches, and it's the starch that's released, the carbohydrate that's released slowly into your bloodstream. Right. But and a lot of people will struggle with eating beans, right? I mean, a lot of people complain <laughs> about gas, the taste, everything yeah, else. Yeah. And there's a lot of interesting ways that people make them, right? Mm -hmm. One of the most popular ways to make beans is with coconut, yes. coconut cream coconut, or coconut yeah, milk. Yeah, yeah. Is that like good or bad? Is that now like undoing mm -hmm. the benefits? Okay, to some extent it is. So usually what we'll have is um, the coconut uh, will have something called saturated fat. It's also in most of the animal products. So there is a certain percentage that is recommended for diabetics. So usually we'll just calculate the total amount of calories, um, the particular, because it's very individualized. The care has to be very individualized. Mm -hmm. So we calculate the calories required. We require the saturated fat to be less than 7%. So we'll convert that. Per day? 
per day, less than 7%. So for example, if we calculate 2,000 calories, 7% of that we can get to like 15 grams of saturated fat. And so we work within that for that particular person. Okay. Okay, so um, there are different ways, of course, to prepare the beans, you know, I think we even stew them quite well. Yeah. In our own traditional ways, you know, the onions, the, the, that's the natural herbs and spices that we use are good enough. Okay. So it just doesn't need to have coconut milk to make it good enough. Right, you know, right. yeah, that Okay, so meat. legumes, we need to have a lot of those. We need legumes. What about meat? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is an African society and we love our meat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there needs to be a balance. Uh, among the principles of nutrition, they still apply even for diabetics and generally balance ought to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, variety needs to be there because the thing is that uh, meat and uh, most uh, what we call animal proteins, they have uh, what we call like all the essential amino acids that you need, which are the proteins basically. Plants will have, um, one will have a particular amino acid that you require and lack another. So that's why you'll usually find us combining them. Like now rice, you'll combine it with beans and then you can have complete proteins, what we call complete proteins. Okay. When we combine beans with maize, we have complete proteins because they're complementing each other. So with animal proteins, they are complete in of themselves. Right. The milk is complete. Um, the meat, whether it's poultry, whether it's beef, they are complete. But what we recommend is at least three times in a week. Okay. You don't want to overdo it. Well, you know, Africans, like once we adapted the Western uh, lifestyle, we bec we think that meat is, uh, you know, it shows a, a certain class. Yeah. So, you know, that those are some of the things that we try. And so not yeah. more than three times a week? At least three times a week. It's not as too strict at the same time. And it's also the type of meat you're having. If you're having chicken, we want to remove the skin, um, the skin just to reduce the cholesterol. Before cooking. Be I yes, before yeah, cooking, before cooking, exactly. Cook exactly, you're going to cook the fat in there. <laughs> but does that lean. include red meat as well? So red meat, we uh, recommend at least, it should be lean, 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 lean meat. So mm -hmm. you're cutting off the fatty parts because um, the saturated fats are mostly found in the animal proteins. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, um, in the world of nutrition, a lot of research is ongoing. So today you'll be told, um, <laughs> stay away from saturated fat. Tomorrow you'll be told it's not as bad, you know, but there just needs to be a balance. You can can't overdo it. There just needs to be that sense of balance and a whole variety. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, pork. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Um, okay. You can do pork, but then it has to be lean okay. and it has to be also balanced. You can't overdo. The thing is, balance has to be is the basis. Because okay, once we start working with a lot of rigidity then we leave uh, people who are managing diabetes feeling like, I can eat this, I can eat this, I can eat this, I can eat this. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had situations where a patient will ask you, then what am I supposed to eat? Right. Because it feels like all you're telling them is what don't not to this, eat. So I like focusing that. on this is what you need to eat sure. and this is what variety looks like and what balance looks like. Right. Yeah. Another big one um, tends to be fruits. Mm -hmm. uh, Mara, you should eat fruits before your meals. They don't know, don't eat them after. Should we don't eat these type of fruits? Maze, at the fruit salad, it's an embarrassment. Where do fruits fit in all this? Because, like you said, there mm. is that that the fruits do, do turn into a carb called mm. fructose, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And some fruits are, are, I guess, very high in sugar. They really, yeah. They so as much as it's natural, mm. you know, is that mm. something we should be concerned about? So fruits need to be part of any healthy diet. They need to be part of a healthy diet. The thing is our fruits, what we call as, what we call a serving of fruit, will have 15 grams of carbohydrates. Okay. So that's more or less the same as like a serving or like a fist size of doma or of ngwashe or um, half a cup of rice. It will still have 15 grams of sugar. So as part of a healthy meal, we will incorporate the 15 grams like of sugar in the fruit in your meal plan. Okay. So fruits do need to be part of a healthy diet. It's just that... Um, the, especially the fact that fruits also have something called fiber, so the sugar in the fruit is released slowly. Right. Now, contrary, we do not recommend fruit juices because um, once you're taking out all of what we call the fiber, the mm. sugar will be released quite fast into the bloodstream. Even if you blend the whole thing and you drink it, is that still taking out the so fiber? So if you blend... Or that's when you're sieving it, do you mean? Yes. Now, if juicing, you sieve it, exactly. Juicing is where you're extracting just the juice and leaving out what we call the fiber. Juicing is bad. 
we're not saying you say it's bad. Oh yeah, no, but so. you're extracting the alumina. <laughs> you're not preempt. You're extracting the fiber. You're, 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 yes, you're extracting the juice and removing the fiber. So yeah. you do want the fiber to be inclu included in your fruit. So that's why we recommend whole fruits rather than the fruit juice. But if you're going to have fruit juice, a serving would be half a cup. Like the, a typical 250 ml glass, it's half of it. Ah. Yes. So you see, it's even better to just have the fruit itself. Why? Because we are looking Why is at it that we are going to have a cup. <laughs> that's like 125 ml. Exactly, that's 125 ml. That's why we recommend having whole fruits themselves. Even when I've not added sugar. The fruit does have sugar. Oh. Like in its simplest form, it's it's um, converted into sugar. Sure. So usually we'll just do a diet plan and we look at maybe you can probably have four servings of fruit in a day. What does four servings of fruit look uh, look like in mm. a day? L like a whole apple is a serving, you mm. know. Half a, a half a glass of fresh juice, extracted juice, is a serving. So that's it's in, if you include it as part of your healthy diet of the four servings, then that makes more sense than just focusing on the juice itself. So when people are walking around having fruit salad for lunch with yogurt and then a smoothie on the side, mm -hmm. it's not exactly At least healthy. it's balanced because now you're having the fruit salad, there's yogurt there, yogurt has protein. Okay. You know, you can throw in some nuts in there. So it's the rate at which even the sugar will be released into your blood will be it's controlled. Okay. It's controlled. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you a question to understand if we and the rest of Avocado Nation can be friends with you, mm -hmm. which is, is avocado okay? <laughs> Be okay. careful how you answer this question. <laughs> Seriously. Fruit is okay. Avocado is okay. Avocado has uh, what we call monounsaturated fats, which are the healthy kind of fats. Hallelujah. So the basic thing, it's overdoing is just the problem. You know, you you can't overdo yeah, overdoing one thing. Is what's okay. over, if I over eat like another. more than it's like one avocado a day, is that too much? No, that's not too much. Like hey, as part of as lot. part of a healthy diet, you know, because you're including <laughs> it as part of your food. So that's very okay. Okay, yeah. so that one is okay. It's An okay. avocado a day keeps the nutritionist <laughs> away. <laughs> Probably. <Tweet> that. <laughs> That's a new one. <laughs> okay, but you know what? When we were talking about brown bread versus whole grain bread, mm -hmm. a thought that came to my mind um, is brown rice. Mm. I, is that legit what we have on the market is that also legit same yeah. with what we're seeing street brown chapels mm -hmm. you know the flour if we're already seeing questions about the the flour that is being used or whatever is being used to make this brown bread rather mm -hmm. than whole grain bread mm -hmm. you know is brown rice something we should consider or is that one can we get a pass on that one um and what about brown chapels as well are those worthwhile efforts mm -hmm. to make mm -hmm. yes they are in terms of the fact that they release sugar slowly into your bloodstream, they have a lot of fiber. Mm. And fiber is what controls the rate at which the sugar is being released. So generally, not just for diabetics, but even for us who consider ourselves healthy, those yeah. are the kinds of food we want to incre uh, include in our diet. Right. So if it's brown rice, you just find ways of spicing it up. Like fried brown rice is actually amazing. You know, there are particular vegetables you can add to your fried rice just to make it a yeah. bit more, you know, more tolerable, as some people right, would right. say in terms of if you're frying with some onion, you add some broccoli in there, some carrots, some peas, just a way to make it um, more palatable for right. you. And as a nutritionist, we're hearing now, you know, cook with ghee, mm -hmm. which when we were growing up, we thought, what? That's bad. Mm -hmm. uh, ghee and coconut oil, for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. Good, bad? So um, a lot of research continues to be done in the world of nutrition. In fact, uh before people do it used to cook with ghee like our parents can make ghee from like cow's milk they right. could make cream they could make butter and they used to use that and they were okay so the thing is that um saturated fats contrary to what was thought before are not as harmful as uh, previously as we imagined as we imagined okay but as part of a healthy diet right. so in moderation in moderation okay. and there are like with coconut oil there are oils that um under high temperatures are more stable than others okay. so that's why you'll find coconut oil being you know right now being spoken about right. all, like all over because it's more stable uh, under high temperatures okay yeah. okay hannah thank you so much for joining me here thank on the you show for it's me. been great talking to you we've come to the end of our program today guys but just before i say kwaheri let me remind you that aladdin is offering a 90 percent discount when you shop of their clothing or groceries online and as our audience here on Switch TV, you can get an extra discount of 200 shillings when you use the discount code 
SWH200. There's also a deal where if you shop to any amount totaling over a thousand shillings, you get to pick an item that will be labeled one bob and that could even include a phone and your goods will be delivered to you within 48 hours of request. With that said, Asantene Sana to all of you for being a part of the show. Thank you to all of my amazing guests, uh, to the crew, to all of you who've SMSed in and sent in your comments and feedback. I appreciate you. Let's do this again tomorrow. Uh, until then, have yourselves a blessed day. I'll see you soon. God bless. Ciao.